Hey guys, Brent Hull here talking about the book. And it's been a while since I shot a video. There's been a lot of work that you see trying to put this together. And basically my first chapter is due at the end of the year. It's gonna be on moldings. And so, you know, how were moldings designed in the 1750s? How were moldings designed in the 1800s? And so I actually have to look back at old pattern books. And so just so you know, there's a couple books, one by Helen Park, one by Janice Schmemelman, who document the architectural books that were available in America in that period. And they go to, they go to uh, accounts from carpenters, like William Buckland and what books he was using. They go to bookstores and they, they see what books they were advertising. And so it's a very extensive, powerful tool for me to understand what was available in America. And so some real clear things are one, there weren't a lot of French books here, right? The majority of the books were English, okay? The most popular book, okay, Okay, was this one called The British Carpenter by Francis Price. And this is obviously a reprint. But what's interesting is if you look at these photos, right? And so you think about a carpentry book, the most popular architectural text in America, you know, before 1800. But look what's inside, okay? Those are, you know, trusses for a house. There's a bridge, right, that, that, that he's showing here, building a, a turret or a, a, a tower, things that, you know, building a steeple, not necessarily things where you'd get moldings. There's a layout of a wall, but really more showing the, you know, the arch and how to, how to lay out an arch. There's a lot of geometry here, a volute. There's a supplement in the back that lays out the different orders, the five orders of architecture according to Palladio. What I learned from, from going through this book is that this was a generalist book, okay? This was a general carpentry book. This wasn't a design book. Now, if you wanted a design book, you would get something like Abraham Swan, where you would see uh, actual moldings laid out here, right? Where you'd actually see decoration and details and a lot of different moldings, cornices, fireplaces, right? All the different things that he was doing, as well as house designs. And so, you know, one thing that's confusing or hard to put all this together is there was many different types of, of pattern books. James Gibb was a very popular pattern book author, um, but look at the things he's drawing and designing, right? These are houses. He has one here, uh, almost palaces, but he's the one who did St. Martin's in the field. It was basically a, a Roman temple that had a, that he put a steeple on it. And it's the reason why steeples are in, in churches in New England and in the South, uh, have steeples on him because he basically took a you know ancient form the you know Greek or Roman temple and then put a steeple on it and made it kind of this contemporary building. Maybe the gentleman architect, maybe the the rich homeowner owned James Gibbs' book, but the carpenter actually owned another book. So there's kind of three guys. There's there's Beatty Langley, uh, there's William Payne, and there's Abraham Swan, who end up being the most influential from what I can see. And so this chapter on moldings is a lot of molding planes. And, you know, how are molding planes made? Well, they were custom made. So there is uh, the molding plane industry and where molding planes came from. A lot of them came from England, right? And so, you know, the, the rise of the American hand plane manufacturer doesn't happen until late in the 1700s into the 1800s. And so, and it lasts longer than you think. So a lot of great stuff I'm learning about what builders knew, what builders studied, what, what they learned from, uh, how they used these books to design. This is uh, Beatty Lang book is the builder's jewel right look how small it is guys so this would have been something that would have been carried around by the craftsman and the architect okay thomas jefferson had some small books of palladio that, that i know he used but if you look inside these books I mean, some of the pictures and the drawings that they're showing, I mean, there are, there are dimensions on here. There's the, this is the composite order. This is the different joinery techniques for, for putting together trusses. So there's some, you know, framing type of things. These are timber framed building type of elements. But in the front part that you get into the architectural orders and he actually gets into designs for pediments and curved and arched pediments and different things like that. So all kinds of different information. And this is why I think Betty Langley was so popular is because he did not only the orders, but he also did design stuff, but he also did, you know, structural and framing things that, you know, made him more complete. If you're only going to buy a few books, you could get a Betty Langley book like this and actually have a lot of information in it. As we look forward into, you know, what Asher Benjamin was doing, Asher Benjamin being the first American plan book author, you know, he's copying a lot of those designs, but realize that in the title of his, uh, his book, The Country Builder's Assistant, he's really 
you know, designing and building a book to help country builders, right? People who weren't in big cities understand how to build things. And, and so a lot of his time is spent on moldings and, you know, the orders of architecture and the kind of the basics of the structure. And then in his later books, you'll see more molding designs and different things like that. He's very influential. So I just spent, you know, two days at Winter Tour where I was looking at historic pattern books like this. OK, so this is a William Payne pattern book showing the design for different houses and you know the the layout of stairs fireplace mantle designs and so this is about 1799 and i was looking through books like this i must have looked through 40 different historic pattern books trying to get a flavor for what was available as far as pattern books how they went and they, and they had a wide variety there's there was books called the measurer okay like a table for how to cut lumber how to get the most yield out of lumber how much to charge for different things and so they're, they were very practical, entry level kind of kind of understanding that were you know popular books. And then there was design books like you know James Gibbs and Abraham Swan. They were actually designing houses. And you think about you know Drayton Hall, or you think about some of the Mount Airy, some of these great historic houses that were built in the 1740s, 1750s. They came from books like this, and that, this is where their design came from. So. Uh, a valuable time of two days spent at Winter Tour learning about, you know, what the world was like and, and, and how these books got put together. Okay, guys, so that's my update in the book. I'm currently writing the chapter on moldings. Um, I owe it to the publisher by the end of the year. The whole book is due in July of next year, so yikes scrambling to get it done i do want to share though that we've got a patreon page for our new podcast called passion for craft and what we are doing is i am actually curating a lot of these pictures that i've found in these historic books for instance this Betty langley's book you know there are pages in here that actually lay out the proportions of the orders right or the proportions of a door or how to lay out moldings and we are going to use these books and I'm gonna curate them, we're gonna print them out, and we're gonna make them available to you guys on the Patreon page so that you can learn and, and elevate your game. I've obviously got a big library here. I love collecting these books. I love pulling the information out of here, but it's hard because, you know, there are, you know, 180 plates in here, but maybe 15 of them are valuable for us building today, right? And so th there are things that, that need to be culled and learned and, and practiced still, and I'm trying to share that information with you. So our Patreon page is our place to do that. If you sign up at the journeyman level, you get access to our library. So I hope you guys consider that as we talk about the passion for craft and how to build better. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and Facebook, Hull Millwork, Cult Homes. Like I said, sign up for that Patreon page. And if you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. I'm Brent Hull, thanks for watching.